While Validate can be used with a number of different design tools, it's fully integrated within Expedition Designer. From my Expedition Designer window, you'll see the Validate item in the toolbar. Configure Project Creation allows me to set up standard naming information for proper feature mapping when I create my Validate project. After verifying the setup, I click the Create Validate Project item in the same dropdown. I choose the location to save my project, click Save, and then Create. This will then launch the Validate window. The board schematic data from our Expedition Designer file is automatically populated within Validate. In this case, I also have a second expansion board with bill of material data that I'd like to import. Including this information will allow me to verify the connections between my original board and its expansion board. In addition to the BOM data for the expansion board, I'm also including its netlist data. Both the BOM and the netlist files can be exported from your schematic tool. Since I'm using two boards with a connector between them, I'll need to include the file for that connector. I select the Excel file, which includes the connector information, and now my file setup will be complete. In the BOM tab, you'll see that the bill of materials for both board designs are populated. This first BOM was automatically created from the expedition data, and the second was from the files that we just imported. With Validate, you have free access to our online model database, which includes over 7 million components. If you have components in your design that require models that are not in the online library, you can assign those models from your local directory. Mentor provides an Excel model template and a guide for creating your own models, or you may also utilize our custom model creation services. Since the model for this oscillator component is missing, I can tell the tool to search the online database. Sure enough, the model is there, so I'll assign it to that part. If I need to manually edit a model file, I can easily do that from within Validate. I'll find the part that needs to be edited, in this case, it's a power jack connector with three pins, but pin number three is actually labeled pin number four on my board. Once I make the necessary changes, I update the component and save the model locally. The app specific field will now indicate that this component is specific to this project. Checking for stale models will search through your project models to determine if any of them are outdated and can be updated with newer ones. Any components that are determined to have stale models will be indicated in the model status column. From here, I can then choose to update to the newest model versions if necessary. Exporting my results will create an Excel file that contains a list of all bill of material components with their reference designators and the models that are assigned to them. I can also choose to export only the components that do not contain models, making it easy for me to share pertinent information with other team members. The Request Unmodeled button will send a request directly to Mentor to utilize model creation services. Here is an example of what a blank model template looks like. These fields will be filled in with the general information for each specific component. The customer number is used for parts with customer-specific part numbers, and the manufacturing number is the part number from the component manufacturer. Often, these numbers will be the same. Most of the information needed for a complete model will be obtained from the parts datasheet. We also provide a how-to guide to help you successfully create your models. This is what you can expect a completed model to look like. Validate extracts information from the component models to make associations between components, nets, and pins. For example, the voltage scan button takes information from the models to determine power nets and their voltage ranges. Results are color-coded based off of information gathered. You can also sort by color to help visualize pin types. This allows you to easily review all of the extracted data and then make changes when necessary. Here, I can also view the results for both of my boards. Validate will guess certain values based off of project data and associated models. The alpha column indicates which pin is the source pin on voltage nets. Even with the extracted information, some values may still need to be added or edited. Care should be taken to review information from automated data. Here, I'm going to manually add the maximum and minimum voltage, as well as the source pin for this net. You may also import these values from a pre-existing spreadsheet file, similar to this one. Once the net and pin data has been populated, I can then export all of the information to a separate spreadsheet. Now that all of the necessary net and pin data has been successfully added, I'm ready to run my rules. 
The Run Manager tab is used to choose which tests I want to run on my project. The Data Confirmation button can be used to run a pre-check to ensure complete setup has been accomplished. Here, you'll see a summary report for the pre-check, which shows that there are no discrepancies between the BOM and the Netlist files for both the main board and the expansion board. It also confirms that Netlist and models exist for all nets and pins and that the connector for the two boards is present and valid. I'll save these results so that I can view them later if needed. The rules are broken down into separate category groups. You have the choice to run only specific individual tests or entire categories of multiple tests. You can also run your selected rules on only specific components by choosing those reference designators. Since I select the All Test Cases and All Reference Designators boxes here, it will override the individual selections and instead run all rules on all components. Now I just click Run and then all the error results will show in the Results tab. I'm able to sort all of the errors by severity or error type in addition to a number of other descriptive factors. You can see that this critical error instance is a 13 versus 15 bus significance error between two pins on a data net. The error description column will show information about the nature of the error and the nets and pins associated with that error. User added notes and special notes from pin models will appear in the pin comments column. Now, I'll save my results in an Excel spreadsheet for documentation and later review. The Intelligent Results Processing option will group error results with the same failure cause and then sort them. This may change the result priority based on the additional intelligent analysis. You'll see in the right-hand panel that there are three types of result level, including critical, defect, and warning. You'll see further information in the description column. Choosing to mask a result will hide that instance when you perform any future runs. Usually, results are masked when they are determined to be insignificant. You may choose to view or hide all of those masked results. Once I've analyzed all of my results, I can choose to export all of the findings into a spreadsheet. Validate will also generate a summary PDF report document. The summary report includes a more in-depth description and explanation of each defect and categorizes them based off of suspected severity. From within Validate, I can also right-click on an error and select View Pin in Designer. This will cross-probe to the specific location of that defect in my schematic window. Here, you can see that the voltage pin is not connected to the net. In just a matter of minutes, I was able to diagnose this error and make the necessary changes saving the time and hassle associated with manual inspection.